Hello friends, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. Praise God, thank you Jesus. Dr. Joy, are you there? Yes, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what is that uh, talking head song? Same as it ever was, same as it ever was. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> Brother Zen, let's see if we can get him on the line. Brother Zen, are you there? I am, brother, how are you doing? Hey, I'm hanging in there, man. Isn't the world we we've, we've since we have last talked the the three of us I think it's reasonable to suggest that the world has entered into a level of apocalyptic insanity that is on a magnitude that may be eight to ten times greater than where we were the last time the three of us were on the air. I mean, have you any? I agree. You, you know what I'm saying? Is it, Would you like to comment on that, Joy, and start, uh, get off? Because I am blown away. Oh, listen, I mean, you know, that's the thing about is that we've been studying this so long. I mean, you and I and Ben have been studying what the end of days was going to be like. And it's just amazing when you have you know, taking years and years to find little pieces of the puzzle to make uh, the move toward Armageddon more understandable. But, boy, when you can see it happening in real time in seconds, it's absolutely amazing. Like you're saying, from where we were this time uh, a month ago and looking at even before the election where we were at, where we really were at on what I would say the timeline of the end of days. And now – looking at where we are. And I had told someone recently, I said, you know, I really feel like that we are much further down the timeline than I even thought because of the changeover and how fast it's moving. And, of course, you know, I've mentioned many times when I've been on the show with you all, is that, you know, my work has always been based on it being like a woman in travail, that the end of days was going to be just like a woman in birth pains. And as those pains got closer and closer together, there would be so much coming at one time. And I can honestly say, I mean, it's like my my Facebook blows up, my, <laughs> my Twitter that I have gets stuff, my Instagram gets stuff. I mean, it's like you can't keep up with what everybody's throwing at each other. And some of it may have bits of truth in it. Other may have total falsehoods about it. And that's the thing. Is a long time ago when I did research, I didn't have to worry about trying to find out from news-related areas what something was, if it was real, from authors that you trusted that had done a lot of research. Now you don't know who to believe. And I think because of that and because there's so much – going on right now and everybody's saying everything, you feel like you're in a tailspin. And that really is much like it is when a woman is in travail and is getting ready to have that baby because everything starts happening. The pains get worse, the feelings get worse, the anxieties, the fears, everything just manifests itself until a point that it's almost a frenzy. And anybody that's been in a room with a woman that goes in labor really understands the, the severeness of the pain and everything that takes place. I mean, the hormones, everything. So, you know, uh, looking at the world today and what has happened just in the last couple of weeks has been like amazing forwardness to the end of days. And I really do see, you know, the, we were talking about surveillance the last time we were talking about, you know, how the the spirit of Cain had taken over and those kind of things. Now we see it manifesting so much that it's just unreal to the point that you can see there's going to be a mark. That mark is going to come because there's going to come a time when if you don't have this vaccination, that you cannot move, you can't go across borders, you may not be able to get insurance. I mean, there's all these things for your freedom that are totally going away. And um, I think Zen can speak that uh, even in some of the work that he's done, he's already been censored. And I know I do an AMA show with him uh, and his uh, channel, and it's down, and it's, it's been censored. And, and so a lot of people don't get it that there is a censorship that has gotten like ten times more worse in, in just the last couple of months. And, in, you know, when that starts happening, shows like this, John, with you and, and me and Zen are going to get where they're not going to let us talk. 
because we are, you know, I've called it the tribulation trio. We literally are saying, look, people, we are the watchmen on the wall. Look what's going on. And so they're going to stop that. They're going to have. They're going to try to put a stop to that. And I'm afraid it's coming sooner than later. And that is what really worries me. That you know tonight. That you know really wanted people to know. Pay attention. This is what the Bible has told us all the time. It's spot on. It is spot on as to how it's going to end. And you got to stay true. You got to stay focused because it's really, 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 really getting bad, and it's going to get really, really, really worse before it gets better. Yeah, I think I think the woman in Travail just got an IV of oxytocin, uh, pytos, yeah. pytos, you know. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's like talk about inducing labor. I mean, it's almost like the doctor's like, okay, listen, I I, I got a golf match at four o'clock. We got to get this over with by three. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Um, uh, Zen, what happened? What's are, you you got? You, you got what? What you know? What happened? What happened? Tell, tell us what happened. What happened with your show? What, did they filter you or something? But your audio is really low. Can Zen, your audio is really low. Can you adjust your mic or something? It's really, really low. The audio uh, amplitude. Yeah, one second. Let me check. No worries. How's that? That's night and day, man. You're sounding great. Go for it. What's going on? Okay, you, great, great. I, have, I apologize. Um, well, you know, our YouTube channels, the numbers have been fudged and manipulated for a very long time. And also our subscribership, people are subscribed. All the notifications have been turned off. And that's been ongoing for a very long time. But now they are actively searching out our database and seeking terms which they are not kind to and um, are flagging videos, taking down and, and you know we've been on the on YouTube since 2007 so it's a it's been a long time uh, I didn't even though I didn't start all of my shows or anything until 2000 um, uh, 2011 and thereabouts and ongoing but now they're going back and searching out keywords and key terms and to see if in the description or in the uh, title uh, there are topics which you know all of us cover a lot of very controversial topics um, but anything New World Order, conspiracy uh, anything to, especially to do with the pedophilia, the pizza gate, all of that, adrenochrome, uh, cannibalism, everything has been targeted. And I've done everything that I could to kind of change all that and to uh, downplay the topics and the subjects and uh, to make it so that they would, you know, have to actually listen in order to understand the content. Uh, but they, are you know i mean we are living in an orwellian time a brave new world where they are going out and changing seeking to alter history the past the present and the future by simply deleting um you know the voices of truth that have come up and that have been loudly proclaiming in the manner that we have in speaking and sounding the trumpet and blowing the alarm and trying to make others aware of the truth of what we are contending with. Even those things which are pointing out who the enemy is. And so, you know, a large majority of my work is uh, committed to explaining, as is Dr. Joyce, explaining the truth of what occurred in the garden and that the war in heaven which fostered the separation of light and darkness and the great contest that uh, began with the rebellion of Lucifer and Legion. Um, and they're trying to usurp the authority 
of Christ that that enmity playing out in the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, well, now they are the ones, you know, the children of Cain, the sons of Belial, the children of perdition, they are the ones that own the platforms that we are using in order to bring forth truth. And having that authority, they are expunging knowledge of who they are and keeping it as much a secret as possible and also with their interactions with the world the things that they've been doing which are abomination and so you know it's unfortunate but it has always been like this that the children of Cain have been expunging the truth extirpating anything that the would help the masses to come to understanding as to what we are really contending with with regard to the powers the principalities the rulers of darkness wickedness in high places and so unfortunately we've been flagged uh, twice now on one of my channels and once on the other and if we get one more strike they uh, could take us down and we're praying and asking people to pray that this does not happen um, because, you know, that's been a lot of work and a lot of effort. We literally mm -hmm. have over a thousand videos on one of my channels um, and over six, seven hundred on the other and have over 60,000 subscribers in combination of both. And that's just what they allow us to, to know. Uh, and those are the ones that they, I guess, are active uh, because they once they're cut off from our subscribership they are actively seeking to come back and to join us so that they can get um in, and continually receive the message and so um you know the these are the core uh, as far as those that follow and support are working we you know give praise and thank god for this group and uh, of ecclesia but unfortunately, they are trying to sweep us under the rug and uh, get rid of all of us as far as, you know, I have a lot of friends that their channels are already have been taken down and they have no footprint, no presence on YouTube. Uh, even Google now is seeking to ban, you know, individuals, accounts, Google Plus, that kind of stuff. But they are now also banning entire platforms like um, I forget the name of the uh, something like Placer or something the, this whole other platform Parlor. Uh, they just Parlor. Parlor yes yeah they just completely eradicated that whole platform and decided oh well we don't agree with what you're saying and we think that you know your slant on truth is harmful and unbeneficial to world and perspective. So we're just going to shut you off, shut you down, and get rid of you. No explanations, no, uh, no nothing. And unfortunately, this is the world that we are living in. And so, um, you know, as, as far as truth, we are trying to move to different platforms like library and. Bit shoot, and we're waiting on a, a new one that is coming up that started um, by one of our friends, Sean uh, Griffith, who is um, Kingdom in Context. He's working with an, a bunch of other Christian coders and truth seekers to bring forth this platform called Lighthouse, which uh, interestingly combines um, what would be Facebook, Etsy, and YouTube all together in one place and um and so we're hoping that platform comes online and that you know they're not going to be censoring in the manner that a lot of these other platforms are and so um and thank god the majority of my focus has been to read and share and to uh bring forth the ancient manuscripts and because of that it does give us sort of a cover in that even though I do cover a lot of conspiratorial and New World Order and controversial topics, 
um, for whatever reason, they are not um, not uh, as far as you know the controversy of the ancient manuscripts and the religious controversy that I seem to bring forth uh, because of my uh, perspective differing from majority opinion with regard to mainstream churchianity. Uh, that does not seem to be a concern as of yet. It's mostly just the political and covering for the elites, uh, covering who they are as far as the seed of Cain and, um, you know, the hiding truth of what's going on. Even the controlled opposition, the false left-right paradigm, the whole theme of, you know, how they um, they take over movements from the top down and also – create chaos and, and bring order out of chaos in order to subjugate or make individuals or movements or groups uh, look bad in the eyes of the world, you know, with their mainstream propaganda, uh, subverting movements with Asian provocateurs. All these kind of things are going on, and unfortunately, most of the world is not keen on their tactics. They they don't understand their strategies, and so they believe the narrative that is being fed to us by the propagandists on uh, on the you know the the bobbleheads on mainstream news and um, the different stations which are trying to uh, share a perspective of truth which is contrary to what's really going on. Yeah, well said. Um, very creepy. Yeah, the parlor takedown <clears throat> is um, monumental in the sense that um, it it wasn't just they're taking the app out of the the app store um, for Google. Then immediately, right, you know, just a, like a I don't even think it was like 48 hours later, they had gotten it out of Apple the Apple Store. But it's worse than that. Then, to my absolute astonishment. Amazon AWS, Amazon Web Services, which is the hosting center, you know, the cloud services company that Parler was using for their systems, they basically kick Parler out of their um, uh, their actual systems. So not only did they hit them from the store availability standpoint, two different ma two of the you know the biggest major stores to get the app for Apple devices and Android devices but then <clears throat> they circle back and they hit them on the infrastructure level okay so they that would be that would be kind of like to to use an analogy that would be similar to you and your your colleague that you mentioned the John fellow or whatever you set you go to all this expense you set up all of these servers. You get people, you know, to contribute their time and to do some coding. You set up some video servers. You get this thing going on. All this effort, all this time, everything gets set up. And then the next thing that happens is the Internet service provider that's providing service to those systems that you just spent all that money, time, and effort, and everything gets pulled the plug. So, it, so they're – so once when they are able to come after the infrastructure, the wiring that allows people to communicate with those servers, which is essentially what happened to Parler, it's game over. Lights out. At that point, you're doomed. Okay, and so you know, no matter how you slice and dice this, no matter what your plan is, you know, we all say, we're, right now we're all going. Well, at least thank goodness we got bit shoot. You know, thank you Jesus we got this. You know, thank you Jesus we can fall back over to this, folks. Every I'm here to tell you as an expert on internet connectivity and communications. No, 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 no. You're not safe at all. No, I don't care what you can call it bit whatever. At the end of the day, if they go after the connectivity, the internet service that is. That I don't care if the server is sitting in your house, it does not matter. If they go after the organization, the company, the LLC, whatever, that is allowing that electronic connection to come into your home and they do whatever they do. Okay, and, and that can be in the form of subpoenas, uh, you know, judgments, um, you know, whatever method that they use. 
and they go after the company that is providing the electrical electronic feed to your server, regardless of where that server is located. You're going down. It's game over. You're shut down. And so when they took Parler, when they went at, went to Amazon Web Services and kicked, got Amazon to kick Parler out, then I was like, oh, boy. Now, I know that all of the people, you know, you got, you know, Levin, you've got, uh, you've got, um, you know, Hannity, you've got, I mean, the you know, Glenn Beck, you've, so many very well-known um, right-wing Republican voices that are now very they're considered very controversial nowadays and they're they all moved over to parlor very quickly and now they're flipping out because parlor's getting taken down now parlor is getting ready to file a lawsuit but you know what it to me that smacks of the same thing that happened i think we're it's too late because when you look at what happened we all know the the magnitude magnitude of the fraud that occurred during the election we've seen the videos we have heard yep. the testimonies we know that the that the fraud events were so there was no arguing it it was so it was case closed jury dismissed guilty as charged done deal okay it was a absolute proven beyond any shadow of a doubt months monstrous fraud we didn't even need the dominion forensic stuff to be brought into play we had the evidence was overwhelming and people saw it by the millions in with their own eyes they saw it and they heard the testimonies of the people that well i'm only 20 years old and i was hired to drive a truck from you know uh, uh new jersey full of ballots uh, all the way over to lancaster pennsylvania in the middle of the night i mean you know nobody had a reason to lie and they had Thousands and thousands of people, video evidence, proof beyond any shadow of a doubt. It went to the Supreme Court of the United States. They wouldn't even hear it. It, it, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And now we're seeing this action on Parler all the way down to the Internet service provider level. Now they're talking about bringing Parler back up on another cloud system, but it's just a matter of time. Before whoever it is that's attacking Amazon, and you might be like, well, Amazon is complicit. That guy's a shape-shifting reptilian. You know what? You're probably right. But I'm saying it doesn't take a lot nowadays to put the fear when, when you've got essentially organized crime level, but it's much worse than organized crime. Much worse than organized crime. How many people mm -hmm. on the legal team of Giuliani – they said it publicly. They warned people in, in front of the entire world. They warned people, we have lawyers that are dropping out. They are quitting because their lives are being threatened. That's right. They said that. You remember that? And, and, if, and, if yes. you, and you know the rule of business. The, this is a very fundamental basic rule. If you have one person complain, there's another 50 that feel the same way that didn't complain. Right. So if there right. was one person right. that quit for that reason, there was probably another 200 that also quit for the same reason. And we don't know. So they've got they have they not they own they own everything. The power grid, the control grid is literally yes. life. Owned by them. Not just threatening to their lives, but their children's lives, their children's fingers and hands body parts yes. they have no problem sending a package in the middle of the night with little Susie's left arm in it no problem That's at right. all and therein lies this magnitude of what we're seeing unfold before our eyes and you're right Zen this is the tip of the iceberg you know we're all mm -hmm. we're, we're moving to the left moving to the right oh no the freight train's heading at me I think I'm going to move over here before they get me the problem is <laughs> it's a fleet of freight trains and they're coming for us all <laughs> you know mm -hmm. Dr. Joy it's true. 
Well, you know, um, I I really saw how this was playing out a long, long, long time ago, and it's amazing to me. And sometimes, John, it it brings me great sadness to see it happening, even though I know it's going to happen. You still have this knowledge, and it's boy, it's heartbreaking because you know how bad it's going to get. So you kind of go like you you have to kind of deal with it every day because you have this knowledge. But I wrote about this stuff in Eden, and I want to quote something that Manly P. Hall was one of the greatest Masons of all time. He wrote in his book, The Secret Destiny of America, the following about the Brotherhood's eventual control over the world. Now, we're talking about this has been a while back, but this is what he wrote. This is his words. There exists in the world today and has existed for thousands of years a body of enlightened humans united in what might be termed order of the quest. It is composed of those whose intellectual and spiritual perceptions have revealed to them that civilization has a secret destiny. Secret, I say, because this high purpose is not realized by the many. The great masses of people still live along without any knowledge whatsoever that they are part of a universal motion. And, you know, when we think about that the Masonic Order and those that came before, the Knights Templar, the Rosicrucians, you go all the way back to the secret societies that were there right after the flood, you know, in, in Egypt and those kinds of things. And you see that they were pushing this agenda of the serpent lineage to really control the world and the masses to the point one day that we wouldn't even have the ability to make freedom of choice in anything. We can see that freedom of choice, like we're talking about, is it can be easily taken away. We, we saw that with uh, our own president who was trying to get information out to just think about the numbers of people who really voted for him, who wanted him to stay in, and he has literally been, literally been shut down. And a country supposedly has a constitution that tells you that you have the right, the freedom to speak your mind, that you have the ability and that you cannot be discriminated against for any thing going on. But yet the social media is somehow above the law, uh, where other people, if you had done that in a regular organization, oh, man, the lawsuits would have been coming and going. You wouldn't have been able to have moved. So the, the thing that really ties it all back and carries me back and when I first started seeing how you've got to have this universal brotherhood that's bringing the new world order to be. I mean, it's the apex of, of the pyramid. It's the all-seeing eye. It's the universal consciousness. It's the move toward new world order. And when you look at that and you see on film Pence standing up there talking apparently to two men, and when he handshakes them, he literally is giving them a Masonic handshake. And when he lets go, he's got something inside of his hand that some people have blown up and said were coins. He literally takes whatever that man put in his hand and puts it in his pocket. I mean, it's not doctored. It literally is the way it is. And I guess because I've studied the Dew Guard so much of how secret societies move through our, our society without us knowing that people are connected to each other. The, the Masons, they use different hand signals, you know, in courts of law and getting stopped on the side of the highway. Uh, there's all kinds of handshakes in business meetings. If you're paying attention and you know the symbols and the signs and what they mean, then you can be on top of your game. But unfortunately, the secret societies have been so secret that, like you say, they threaten people once you get to a certain level that you're going to kill these people. And I mean the, the Masonic people really make them take these terrible blood oaths about having their tongues cut out at noonday and washed up on the beach and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's like really weird stuff that I wrote about in Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil 666. It literally, I listed some of those terrible oaths word by word that these people go by. So, yes, they do kill people. 
they do threaten people. It's not a conspiracy. They literally control the masses by being able to control, blackmail somebody or threaten them with their lives or threaten them with their children's lives or their livelihoods or whatever. And it's not something that just started. I literally proved by the research that I did that it started a very, very long time ago. And we we all know, us three know, that what happened in that garden with Cain is why we're playing out the wheat and the tears right now. And that's why a lot of people go, well, why can't these people see this? You know, are they blind that you find out that someone's got PhDs and different kinds of things, and you're going – why can't they really see the truth? Why are they missing the truth? It's because they are cares and because they're part of the serpent lineage. And then the people who fall victim to that serpent lineage are brainwashed into what they are being told and believing. And so we're fighting in a, a, a time now when we used to be the minority, the common person, the common people of God were the minority. Now, I mean, majority, now we are the minority because this serpent's whole intent has been to raise more and more and more of their serpent lineage, to overtake stuff, to brainwash, to suck these people in. And literally, they are causing their minds to really be severed from God, literally. And the more I've studied the pineal gland, and the more the manip manipulation of technology and 5G technology and all the stuff that's going on, if you don't stay focused on, on truth, you cannot deal with it. Because every day, if you've noticed, because I've noticed this, the more you try to do good, the more you get hurt, the more you suffer, the more you feel like, oh, my gosh, can I keep going at the same level? Because the attack... You can feel it. It's not like it's fake. You know that little things just blow up for no reason. You're like, why would that be important? This is not important to the whole prospect of what the world is going through right now. But yet it will be something just to constantly nag you and pick you and trying to make you stumble and fall. God's people right now are more pressing than they will ever have been in the past. But the problem is, that oppression is going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, that Satan can't possess us because we're Christians, but he can oppress us. And I tell you, that oppression is getting so great that you can see what happened up there in Washington. And people have, like you say, things on camera. You can't deny. Votes brought out, put on the table. We're talking about surveillance systems that were really in real time recording this stuff. And yet, nobody's paying attention to it. You know, the Chinese, the Russians are at our borders. They're waiting for Rome to crumble from within. And when we do, we are going down. And that's exactly what Satan has wanted from the beginning, and like I say, it was told to us by Manly P. Hall, one of the greatest Masons of all, all time in his book, The Secret Destiny of America. Yeah, I mean, you can go back to the New Atlantis with Sir Francis Bacon, who was a well-known uh, Rosicrucian of his time. And, you know, of course, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's uh, – I don't know what – I forget what the term is they call it, but it, it's written in, in, in sort of like symbolic language. But when you read between the lines – you know what they're actually talking about. You understand that concept of the phoenix and how the phoenix has to be burned to the ground for the birth of the new whatever right. that is. That, you know, that, that new world order essentially is where, what it's at. You can call it global reset. You can give it whatever name, you know, you, you want to give it. At the end of the day, the, the you know, um, whether you agree with it or not, at the end of the day, I can tell you this is a fact. Anybody who's done any homework <clears> – <throat> And I know you guys are familiar with this. Anybody who's done any homework on the organizations that have been focused on the demise and the um, – on the demise of the United States, they – when you start reading their white papers, if you're one of those people that's you know, willing to put in the time and you start doing some digging and you look at some of the white papers and the reports that they've come out, you know, the, uh, you, what you discover 
pretty quickly is that they've had difficulty with the United States because of the way the government structure is. The, the it's been a problem for them. They've been working to collapse this country now for quite some time, and just by nature of the compartmentalization of how the state the states work and just everything, the, the whole judicial system, you know, the different branches, you know, the different par- parts of the government, you know, the executive branch and the judicial branch and all that. It, it has been a real headache, you know, for these these large organizations like the Council on Foreign Relations and things like that to try to come mm-hmm. up with a strategy to ultimately bring down the United States. Because, because like it or lump it, at the end of the day, the United States has has been – I mean whether you approve of the methods of the United States, whether you are aware of how satanically evil they can, the United States has been historically in fomenting war, causing you know, the, the faking of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, all that kind of creepy weirdness. But at the end of the day – we still have a way, one way or the other, good or bad. We have a way of getting in the in getting in between and stopping or becoming the police force, if you will, of stopping other master plans. Okay, there may be these, you know, and we've had you know Illuminati survivors and people that were born into the Illuminati families on the show, and they talk about how the various factions of the Illuminati will actually the Romanov family versus. The Lee family out of China versus the Rockefeller group out of the New York, mm-hmm. and, and how they fight amongst each other over control of the different parts of the world, and who, you know, and that kind of thing, which is very similar to Nazi Germany. Uh, the whole reason why uh, Hitler put the SS in place was to keep the fighting that was going on between his generals and the various parts of the army and stuff from becoming a problem for him. So he needed the police force to watch the police, and so um, that same dynamic is in play on a global level. At at a satanic order level, and now what we're seeing, what it appears to me anyway, is what we're seeing is for the first time in the history of this country, they have finally come up with a – they have infiltrated enough positions of power – now, again, whether that be through monetary control, whether that be through um, them being part of the blood ritual ceremony. In other words, they're actually part of the group. They're not really even human. Okay? But they've got the infiltration so deep. And so it's so – it's it, it, I, in my personal opinion, the Supreme Court of the United States is owned by them. In my personal opinion mm-hmm. – Every one of the five to six states that were involved in the major portion of the fraud, they're deeply, deeply owned by them. Now, whether or not oh, they yeah. are, you know, whether or not they're actually reptilian entities or they're controlled by sheer fear, hard to say. But to have some, to have a situation like we had with Georgia, where the the secretary of Georgia could have easily said, "Yep, you know what? We need to check the signatures," but he didn't. He defended himself. He was busted on live cameras with people rolling suitcases of fake ballots out. <laughs> Hannity right. covers it. Tucker Carlson covers it. Laura Ingram covers it. The whole world is going. This is unbelievable. And then they confront the secretary of the state of Georgia, and the guy goes, "No, no, 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 no everything's fine. No, we do that all the time. We, 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 yeah, we always have cables over there. Yeah, we roll stuff out all the time. That was nothing. There's nothing to see here. Just you know, forget about it. It was perfectly fine. <laughs> this is we're past. It's really point. sad. It's terrible." It, it's, it's terrible. Horrible. It's horrific because we finally – we have come in my – I don't know if this is true or not. There's a side of me that kind of hopes it's not, and then there's a side of me that kind of hopes it does. There's this – I call it um, – I jokingly made up a term earlier today on the show. I called it NSD. I, I said for those of you out there who have – you know, are familiar with a large part, you know, your family members, the members of your church, the people in your neighborhood, all the people that you all the people that you know, the people that you work with, and you're befuddled because you, like ninety eight percent of them think everything's just fine. And so I said, you know, we, we need to have a name for that. So I said, let's call it NSD. Normalcy psychotic disorder. They cannot accept mm-hmm. it being what we say it actually is. 
So in an almost psychologically abnormal manner, they accept the unacceptable, even when it's presented to them indisputably. Right. And uh, I wonder to myself, we we had a couple of uh, visits from Bob Fletcher, from Bob, Bob Fletcher Investigations, who's become very focused on Planet X, and he maintains with his contacts that the level of what we're seeing happening today, the, the magnitude, where they start just taking everybody down un, with no mitigation at all, no control at all, no Supreme Courts getting in the way, nobody filing any lawsuits, lots of people flapping their lips and saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to stop them, we're going to put an end to this, we're going to do a, you know, and but nothing ever happened. And Fletcher maintained that when we got – essentially his position was that when the country got to the state that we're essentially in right now, he believed that it was because Planet X was so close to the Earth that they had no choice but to lock down the population immediately. And I wonder a little bit if that might not have an element of truth to it. I don't know. Zen, what do you think? Um. I don't know if there's any connection with that, um, but I personally believe that, you know, it's like uh, the blooming of the fig tree, because in Matthew uh, 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Christ said, "Be ye, know ye the parable of the fig tree, and I think that Legion, without a doubt, in that they recognized him, uh, they said, have you come to torment us before the time? I think they recognize that the regathering of Israel uh, is the sign for the last generation and an indication that they have to accelerate the agenda. And so without a doubt, we are living in those times. And they have for a very long time orchestrated, planned, and put aside the intention to create an economic crisis which placed all of the workers uh, onto the streets so that they would riot, rape, pillage, plunder, burn down the infrastructure, um, and that the normalcy that we would know um, would be completely changed. And the scriptures even speak about a time when there would be peace and then come sudden destruction. And so... I see that this is where we are and that Corona, um, the COVID and the lockdowns, the destruction of the economy, the small businesses, um, and you know, the, all of that, that, that part of them moving us into the next, because I do believe without a doubt that, the Antichrist is on the scene. It's just a matter of time for him to be um, brought forth and made, you know, the world will be aware. They'll wonder at the beast. And, uh, you know, I believe that we're at that time now um, and that the beast system is without a doubt being set up. The forced vaccinations and that whole protocol to – because we don't even know the repercussions of what's going to happen from people lining up to take these vaccines and what's going to happen to the, because there's going to be a large part of the populace that receives them. And so, you know, the next year or whatever, um, things are going to escalate. And, you know, the scriptures tell us that there has, will never be a time like this, not since the beginning, and that things will only get worse unless the days be shortened. There should be no flesh left. And so what we see is uh, we're placed into a very precarious position where humanity as a collective and all of us individually, uh, we're being placed on a precipice where the uncertainty of what's coming will only foster the environment that the Antichrist can come forth 
and the whole Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, uh, they've already have that in mind, that what they've written on the Georgia Guidestones with, you know, creating a servant class, decimating the population down to uh, 500 million, uh, that's, that's their goal, that's their focus. And out of that, they have, you know, the whole theme of the new age, the golden age, where the fallen angels have all of the answers and, um, you know, that he's able to create supernatural miracle, call down fire from heaven and to create things that will make us all believe that he is Messiah. When we know it's only the Christians that know the truth that uh, before the return of the true Messiah, that there will be a rise to power of a false antichrist. And so that's what we're waiting for. But the rest of the world is going to be groomed to accept the fallen angels as our uh, beneficent creators. And that's, you know, that whole theme is playing out. The, it's the foundation is being laid. Ancient aliens, all of these, you know, antediluvian structures, all of the prior times, uh, the Atlantean myth, all of that mythology, which people have, you know, basically believed to be fairy tale or fantasy, they're starting to consider that uh, and to really give thought to the idea that, you know, the extraterrestrials, the ancient aliens, that they were the ones that created this superior race at a time and that they promised to return at the end in order to save us from ourselves. That's what's all playing out. And it's only we, the the Christians, and I'm, when I say Christians, I'm talking about a very small minority of what is the elect, because most Christians have no idea as to the esoteric right. side of the world experience. And the preachers, the pastors, the ministers that are supposed to interpret the Bible and to help people to understand the truth, they themselves do not know or understand any of these concepts and literally make fun of those that know the things that we know. And so, you know, the elect is but a very small group. Oh, it's 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 unbelievably scary. As a matter of fact, um, I, I got a little bit of a wake-up call just prior to the show. Somebody um, that I chat with occasionally back and forth um, – she kind of like insisted that I install an app on my phone called Telegram, and it, 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 it's it's heavily um, Russian in its nature. Um, uh, she she she's from the Ukraine, but she lives in the United States. And but she was like, but there's a ton. She said, don't worry about that. She said there's a ton of stuff in there you're gonna want to know about. So I went ahead and I I did it, and she sent me over a couple of groups that communicate, kind of like Facebook group kind of thing, and. I just opened it up, and, and she said, just open this up. One of them's called COVID Red Pill, and the other one's called Peach something, Peach Blossom or whatever. And she just said, just open one up. Don't worry about the Russian language. Just scroll down and look at the, the, the videos. And I did. And I was deeply troubled because what we are aware of right now as far as – global unrest is concerned is if I was to use an analogy of the iceberg that sunk the Titanic what we're aware of is the equivalent is the equivalent of taking a razor blade and scraping a molecule of ice off the top of that iceberg the amount of unrest the fires that are being set the people that are being killed the covid riots the lockdown riots the anti-vax riots that are occurring all over the world mm -hmm. in world it, it's so out of control right now and most of us even those of us who are totally tuned in and to your point dr joy i'm with you i have probably i don't know maybe eight to ten apps that are their primary purpose is to keep me informed on a global level of what's right. happening. You know what I'm saying? And I'm overwhelmed. I yes. cannot keep up with it. And sometimes it gets to be so 
you become so overwhelmed with the negativity that you have no choice but to unplug to keep your own sanity. It's unbelievable. Right. And um, it, I, I am I can tell you that by the time I started this program tonight, I was alarmed. I was alarmed. And for mm-hmm. me to be alarmed, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For somebody like me okay. to be alarmed, that says a lot because I've been plugged in. We've all, the three of us have been plugged in. We haven't just been plugged in. We've been like 440 volts plugged in now for like a decade. <laughs> you know, For us to right. be saying that right now is, is it's alarming. It's almost exhausting. It's it's beyond yeah. exhausting. Yeah, Joy, it really feels like it's so exhausting. Yes, I mean this is uh, this is the thing that I was talking about earlier. It's exhausting because you feel the oppression. Uh, I know one night I woke up, I couldn't sleep. I just could not sleep. I could not sleep, and I just I didn't feel like I was going to die or anything like that. But I couldn't sleep because I felt that oppression. I mean, I literally felt the air in the world was not right. I mean, I can feel stuff. I've always had ability to discern evil, and that's something that uh, you know God gave me that capability. My mother used to be amazed by it because I would she she would know because she she would leave somewhere and she'd go, I know something's not right. What was wrong? And I would say, and I said, I can feel when evil's present, and it and it's a bad feeling. You really feel it. You feel it. And I know some of my closest friends. You know, it used to really kind of make them a little bit nervous because they would they would know that I literally could feel it, and 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 like I say, mother knew that I could feel it, and we would talk about it many times. And of course, it made me very sad because it's it's an uncomfortable feeling. And the other night, it was just overwhelming. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't get it out of my mind that evil was just, it was just oppressing. It was just so oppressing. And so, you know, when I really look at what's happening and I see how it's happening and I know this and even though we're fighting against a principality in high places that literally we can't see but it's so much more powerful than what we are but when you can feel it it's not like it's an imaginary thing you really feel that darkness you feel that moment you feel when when this energy or whatever it is that Satan has the capability of doing to people, you know that it's actually emanating from something. Either it's being done or said or in that person or there's a spirit there that you can feel it. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible feeling. And, you know, over the course of years of me trying to learn to deal with that, uh, it, it's been very, very strange to have to learn to deal with it, but at the same time, what I've seen and what i felt is that how much more intense it is now with little things that I feel it, that I know that's not right, and, I, and I'm like, how do I deal with it? And, and then I go internally in my mind really to try to bring Scripture to me to be able to deal with that oppression. And I honestly believe that if you're walking close, if you're walking close, you're going to feel that oppression. You're going to know the moment that Satan's in the room with his evilness. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it, and you're going to feel what the world's going through, and it's going to be a heavy burden. And now, as this has gotten so bad, you remember it talks about when, when Jesus was there in the garden, he knew the sins of the world was going to be upon him and supposedly was supposed to be you know, sweating blood and that kind of stuff. I can honestly say I get like a – tiny centimeter or little millimeter of a feeling of what he was talking about or what scripture's talking about because that oppression when it comes at you you know it's not necessarily the people or the person it's that something else is in between the mix that you can't see it but yet you can feel it and that and that's a terrible thing and so when I when I was looking at some of the things that are now being brought up they go back and they they bring up some things that I really talked about what people used to laugh about, and that was the UFO situation. But, you know, the other night on January the 5th, Tucker Carlson had Nick Pope on for a, uh, inter interview. And apparently there's a 180-day countdown to UFO disclosures. Well, it's kind of like what Zen was saying. The fallen angels have always not wanted us to know that they've been here and that all this alien agenda – it's not like somebody living in the Pleiades is coming back to save us. They want people to believe that, and that's why you get all the little things on um, TV that promote that alien agenda. 
um, because they people will more likely accept that than to really know the truth that these are fallen angels, there's demonic entities, and all this depression that's going on are actually evil spirits that are among us. And we know they were there because when Jesus was here, he cast them out of people, and they talked to Jesus, and Jesus talked back to them. So they are very real. They haven't gone anywhere. And so the thing that is amazing to me, that with everything that's going on, what pops up in the news but 180-day countdown to UFO disclosures. Well, it's quite obvious. If you've watched any of the footage of the Tic Tac and all the other little things that happened with the Navy and all of that that they have on film, we would, if the, if the Chinese and if the Russians own that capability, we would be toast right now. We don't own it because there, the people said there's no way we can defend the United States against this. So I know it's not our technology, and it's not the Chinese and not the Russians, or they would already they they would have already taken us over with everything that's been going on. So something is about to happen with that, and we know in Scripture it says, you know, that the abyss is going to be opened up, that these things are going to come out, and most any uh, people that have ever uh, studied UFOs, like I have studied UFOs, is that if somebody ever has a presence of one of these beings, they have a sulfuric smell. I mean, it's like really. Sulfuric, where does that come from? We think about what does the Bible tell us where these things are at? And most of your UFOs that come out of the oceans come out near uh, oceans where there's volcanoes. They have a lot of activity around volcanoes. Sulfuric. What have we always said? The Bible says that hell is below us. Well, what is below us? What's down there in the ground? What's sulfuric that's down there in the ground? I mean, you can go back and Scripture tells you this over and over and over again. So I feel like, yeah, that we're moving toward this Antichrist person. We are moving toward we need a Savior, that these beings show up. We're going to really need a Savior. And I just found it really interesting that this week we've been told that Britain and the Vatican have played a part in what's happened to Trump. Now, don't you think that's a little bit weird that nothing's been discussed about Britain being – it's always been our ally, you know. And we go back, and I did the work, you know, on Hitler and the Vatican and how all of that transpired, and Henry Ford was a part of all that, I.G. Farben, all in there with Hitler and what transpired with all of that. And then we yeah. start thinking about, well, what happens if the Antichrist really is a serpent? And he's got to rule the world. Who's going to walk in and save it? Somebody knows something. And I think that Trump knew a lot about uh, what happened with Princess Diana and what happened with Charles. And I fully believe there is an ongoing battle of good and evil. And I think that the people that have, uh, uh, are revealing how Italy and the Vatican, and how all that's connected, and then how the the royal families behind some of this other that's been going on from England to attack us. Oh, my gosh. And like you mentioned, John, this stuff is happening all over the world. I mean, I do research with people from around the world, so I get firsthand information. And the other day, this person tried to send me stuff, and it showed up that some things had been blocked, that the European Union was not letting certain stuff out, and she could not get to me what she wanted to send to me. So surveillance is getting to the point that where I was able to get documented, look at this myself, that they're blocking it from it being able to get to me. So something very, 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 very real is happening. It's not a conspiracy. And I think we're, if they're fixing to do something with this, UFO agenda and open the books up about that, we can just look out because it's going to set the stage for that Antichrist to come to power. Because at that point, with everybody knowing that COVID is getting worse, we are, we've got those new strands of COVID. You know, it's like when you get a flu shot, if you've got a different flu shot for this, and this strand that doesn't take care of that strand. I mean, if we can't get a flu under control, don't think we're going to get a plague out of proportion under control like they think they're going to do. But they're going to use it to get us to go to a mark. 
I mean, everything is just headed in that direction. Bitcoin is already underground. I mean, when you can't buy, sell, or trade unless you've got some kind of tattoo on your hand or forehead, and we know that you can be tracked. Uh, the other day, I have Global that tracks me, and they sent me a year update on how many places I had been, where, what, how, how, how many time I've spent in my automobile, it, it, with the places I had visited that I'd never been to, the places I had eaten, the places I had bought from. But let me tell you what else it told me. It told me how many hours I was on my motorcycle and where I went. But now dig this. It also told me how many hours I was on my bicycle. Now you tell me how my phone and my backpack knew that I was on a bicycle and on a motorcycle, and not in a car. We are already being tracked down oh, yeah. to the nth degree. And don't it's let anybody hammer. tell you different, because they did it to me, and I've got proof of it. Oh yeah, it's the accelerometer. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm one of those people, uh, you know, and that's okay. I'm a weird dude. I'm okay with that. Everybody, I'm a walking payday bar. I have no problem with that. I'm as weird as weird can be. Now that being said, I don't care if they follow me. I don't care if they monitor my security cameras. I don't give a rip. If they want to come in, all I do is I pray to the Lord, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, when they come to get me, just kill me quick. I just want to die fast. That's the only thing I pray about. I, I don't care if they look at my security cameras. I don't care if they track me. But um, I, I, I've been a Fitbit person for a long time, and the, they've gotten the accelerometer technologies. There's a little device in there. It's a little device known as an accelerometer, and it, it, it is astonishing what they are able to do. They've taken enough – minute and exact measurements of the output of the accelerometer device in and they have them in the phone for the health for the health uh, monitoring capability of the phone they have them in the fitbit devices they have them in the garmin devices so all of these health trackers whether they're phone based whether they're wrist based it doesn't matter that little accelerometer device they have gotten it to the point where it is able to detect what it is you're doing. Are you walking? Mm -hmm. Are you on? I can tell me if I'm on an elliptical trainer. It knows whether or not I'm taking a fast walk. It knows if I'm riding my bike. It knows because they've taken finely tuned electronic signal measurements off those, elect, those accelerometers whereby they have patterns established for any one of those particular behaviors. And it, it, that's how minute it is. It's unbelievable. Um, but to your point earlier regarding the palpable oppression, I'm intrigued by that because you're not alone. I had communications with a, a, a brother of mine named, you know, in Christ named Chamil, who lives in Belgium. He was saying the same thing. I was talking to, I think it was uh, Brother Jeremy over in Portland. He was saying the same thing. I have like a, ha I don't know how many people, probably about three or four people, all at the same time, unsolicited. I didn't say to them, hey, have you been feeling like a darkness around you? You know, I didn't solicit the information from them. They, they gave it to me. They're like, they were the ones who initiated that, that, that concern. So it's not just you. It's a lot of people are experiencing a very palpable, tangible, you can feel it kind of thing, mm -hmm. darkness. And it is, it, and for those of us, I call it, um, I studied this a, a while back because I kind of had a hunch that I was one. And they, you know, they've coined a phrase for just about it, everything nowadays. And, um, they call it an HSP, a highly sensitive person. And they actually have mm -hmm. testing. You can take testing, and they, they're very – they're involved tests. And you answer all of these questions and under different circumstances and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And you score up to a point of 20 or whatever. And I, I score very high on the HSP scale, which is actually kind of an impediment because when you get too much 
negativity in your life, it can really bring you down. If you're an HSP, it just mm. affects you. Mm. You're an empath. You're yeah. an empath. You cannot stand to see somebody's feelings hurt. You cannot seem to be – you can't stand it. You know, you, you just can't stand it. It drives you crazy. And um, I've That's been right. just overwhelmed. By that feeling, I've been overwhelmed with. I mean, I, it's it's to the point right now. I kid you not. The last thing I really want to do. I mean, I don't want to do this, but I feel passionately, overwhelmedly strong about letting my sister Marilyn up in Pennsylvania know that I'm to probably expect me to show up on her door with a duffel bag and my two dogs for a place to stay. You know what I'm saying? I just feel, I can't explain it, but it's palpable. I feel like there's a clock ticking and it's just a matter of time before something happens. And my Yeah, I mean, you know, you, I think sometimes people have like post-traumatic stress disorder and stuff like that, that they have, you know, a feeling. But this is like you're saying, it's just a total different kind of feeling and you just you know it you know it's just something really weird um and and, it, and like i say i'm glad to know that i'm not the only person that that has that because it is something it's easy to talk to someone that really does understand what that feels like and the whole thing about um the sleeping disorder now i'm not going to get into the details but you know i have at this moment in time i have pretty good insurance i'm Come Tuesday, who knows? But you know, um, but at this time, I have pretty good health insurance, and um, you know, th this is conversations that I have with with my doctor, and th this is it's a, it's taking over the world. People are not sleeping, and and by the way, if you know any anybody who knows anything about torture and all that kind of stuff, one of the most effective ways is sleep deprivation torture, and um, to really drive a person completely crazy. And so this this palpable evil I'm, folks I'm having conversations with executives that are making over a quarter of a million dollars a year or in the range of 200, 250,000 very senior executives with a multi-billion dollar company and, and they I don't know what it is about me but for some reason they just let loose on me they will call me up on the phone and they'll be like what do you think about all this weird stuff that's going on and these, these aren't even believers you know what I'm saying Jeez. they're floating out they're flipping out. They're like, are you going to take the vaccine? What are we going to do if they make us take the vaccine? But, oh, 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 you know, we, we, uh, I'm, and I'm just like, I'm just like going, you know, well, you know, because where we are right now, to, to both of your point, is something has pushed us into a state of acceleration. You know what I'm saying? It's a no yeah. hold bar. We are now in a no Hold, barred, accelerated, United States takedown situation right now. It is physically in play. I have parlor. I'm watching what Levin is saying. I'm watching what Hannity is saying. I'm watching what uh, Glenn Beck is saying. I'm listening to – I'm paying attention, and they're freaking out right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks. These people are freaking out. <laughs> Zen? Yeah. Did you want to jump in, Zen? Oh, sorry. Sure. I just wanted to, you know, before we get to the end of the show, the, to really have people to wake up and to start doing their research, but first and foremost, to really seek intimate relationship with the Most High. Because these times, even though people can prepare and, you know, you have a lot of now doomsday preppers and people are trying to uh, – take uh, and to take action in different manner all of that is meaningless without relationship with the father the son and the holy spirit because israel went into the wilderness and they were there for 40 years so everything that they took ran out and i think that you know what is most important because god can provide and no matter where we are he can protect is his own and will do so and so most important is prioritizing the kingdom and you know knowing your savior understanding that salvation is through christ uh that's the first and foremost 
because again this is a spiritual war even though yes we live in this carnal world uh but it, the the true battle the true war is not against flesh and blood and so we have to have the spiritual authority and the dominion of Christ in the most high the father the son and the holy spirit on our side in order to really be okay and comfortable because we're not called to fear and we're not called to live in that kind of spirit to hold that kind of uncertainty in our lives we're to know that grace and compassion and love uh, that that is our God uh, and that we're going to be cared for and so I, I can only hope that people can have that peace in their heart and to carry that with them moving forward through just the extreme anxiety and uncertainty of these times because without having that relating and not being able to lean on or depend on that support I, I don't see how people could even you know make it with the worry the concern even now with so many losing their jobs and uh, uncertain about being able to feed themselves and their family members, even, you know, the normalcy of school, uh, the regular, as far as the education system and kids going to school and uh, migrating and coming together. All of these dynamics are completely altered and we don't know how and what will be the normal for tomorrow. Um, but, you know, even with all of that uncertainty and all of that concern, we can leave that to God and trust, just like Matthew 6 and the whole thing of the lilies in the field. Uh, we, we don't have to be overly concerned with all that. If we just trust the Most High and know that we're going to be taken care of, we're going to be cared for, we're going to be protected, that's the greatest feeling and that's the most awesome way of being that one can have in moving towards the future that's very well said and I got to tell you um, I was having a conversation with um, somebody uh, over in Europe earlier today and I explained to her that in my life and I have not arrived. I have definitely not arrived. I'm hanging on to the bus bumper. It's gone over potholes, and I let go sometimes. But I've just because of the dynamics associated with my life, the characteristics of my job, this radio show, the conflict of interest associated with the two, many, 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 many variables, my situation, my life situation is exceedingly tenuous. It is fragile, very, very fragile. And I have been brought to a place where I have to have that conversation with the Lord every day. I've got to say to him, I am yours. I give you my body holy and acceptable as my spiritual service of worship to you. Do with me what you will. If, if it is your will, Father, that I die it, in a painful manner, if it's your will that I be hung upside down from a cross, and if it is your will that I go through this, if it is your will that I become homeless, if it is your will that I continue to work and continue to do the radio show, I am here for you. I want to fulfill your will. I want to fulfill the things that were written in your book in Psalm 139, verse 16 about me. I want to do the best job that I possibly can. And if that is your will, Father, for me to continue... I declare and petition the courts of heaven in the name of Jesus for divine protection over my job, for divine protection over this, 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 and this. And I list all of those things out, but I always say, Father, your will be done. It's a form of Amen. peace that comes over me. It's a surrender yes. that I have to have because if I am mm. not willing in my heart, when it's when you're clenching on to that raggedy end doll. And you feel somebody trying to pull that rag, that metaphorical or analogous from in a raggedy Ann doll out of your hand. Something that you think you got to have in your life. Oh, I can't live without that. I can't live without that. I got to have that. And you and and you can feel 
the energy, the negative energy, pulling it out of your hand, that's when you become uncomfortable. That's when fear, your greatest enemy, enters in. And that's when you are sucked away. The power of Christ and the authority of Christ that we were given is pulled out of you. That energy is it's sucked out of you. As simple as that. And that energy is restored through the process of absolute surrender. When you don't care, when it is like, Father, all I want to do is serve you. I am yours. It is your choice. This is my petition before your throne. I'm asking you for protection. It says in John 14, 13 and 14, it says, you know, Jesus says, and this is, uh, I find this very interesting, but a lot of people miss the point. It says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. It also goes on, Jesus goes on to say, if you ask anything in my, my name, that I will do. The problem is people read this, but they miss the most important part, which I omitted on purpose to make a point. Right in the middle of this promise, it says that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, which is the quintessential meaning behind thy will be done. And that is, the, that is when you get your peace, where it says in Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says, you, uh, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusts you. When you're willing to let it go, just let it all go. Whatever you want, Father. Whatever you want, Father. And when you pray, when you're asking the Father for protection, for whatever it is, if in deep in your heart the reason why you're asking for that is so that you can further glorify him, then you have every reason to believe with all your heart that you will receive that which you ask for because you're genuinely seeking to glorify the Father through the sacrifice of what Jesus went through. And that takes total surrender. You have got to let that Raggedy end all go, whatever that is. And that's a hard thing to do. Um, Dr. Joy, did you want to go ahead and wrap up the last part of the program for us? Well, I totally agree with you that that is the biggest thing that we've got to learn is how important our souls are and that we are a body with a spirit and a soul that lives forever. And I think sometimes we forget how important the greatest asset that we have is our soul. And we definitely, like Zen says, we want to make the right choices in where we choose to live our lives. And the promise of, you know, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that whatever happens on this planet, that we end up in paradise. But if we so choose to do it our way and we have selfish motives and we follow in the steps of what Satan clearly, clearly teaches us if we'll just listen to him to do all the things against Christ, then we're going to end up in a place called hell. And it's quite evident there's only two places you get the choice of. You get the choice of heaven or you get the choice of hell. But it is your choice. And while there is free will and you're able to make those decisions, you need to go ahead and plan on how you want to live out each day of your life. And whatever you have to fight, that you put God first, first Amen. and foremost. Which is, by the way, and I mentioned this earlier in the program, you know, isn't it fascinating when apostles asked the Lord, you know, Jesus, um, they asked them, what's the most important commandment? And I, I think he threw them for a loop. I think he really blew their mind. He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. You know, how many of us are even meeting the requirements of the most important commandment of all? 
-hmm. How many of us are preoccupied with so many other bazillions of things in our lives, concerns about how we might die, what's going to happen if I get forced to do this or that, but we really haven't even fallen in love with our Father yet. Well, you're too busy playing with technology to really sit down and read the Bible. I mean, Satan's been very good at at technology because everybody spends more time on all these gadgets where if they were spending that amount of time in God's Word, this world would be a whole lot different right now. Yeah, and in in the book um, How to Heal the Sick by Charles and Francis Hunter – um yeah she had she had said in one of her, her um paragraphs of her growth and her in the growth of her her faith that um through the power of confession because Christ lives in us right and so when you know and there's life and death and power of the tongue and it's all over the bible so when Christ you know I, I, to live is great or uh, you know it, it's you know I have died but you know Christ lives in me you know and, and you know is all, all, mm-hmm. There's so many scriptures that that, it, that that capture the essence of the fact that when you have accepted Christ into your heart, Jesus into your heart, that becomes a power. And then that's why it says in John 1, 9, if we confess of our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Note how vitally important it is for us to speak forth that which we did wrong. That's the condi- there, yes. Our Father is the quid pro quo God. There is always a requirement. You're not going to get diddly from our Father unless you meet the requirement that he has laid out in, in advance. And he says, if you confess of your sins, he, our Father, is yeah, faithful. Yeah, you've got to confess. So you're speaking forth with the power of Christ in you, and you're saying, Father, I did this crummy thing. I admit it. Now, why is that important? Well, because in the Charles and Francis Hunter book, she admitted in the book, I wasn't in love with the father. I was already serving him. We were already laying hands. Me and my husband, Francis, or Charles, were, were already laying hands on people uh, you know, to get healed and all this other stuff. And she, she admitted she wasn't really in love with the father, not to that extent. And she explained, she said, I would wake up every day when I realized it, and I would pray and say, Father, I need to love you more. And she said, I would use the power of confession, and I would say with my tongue, I would speak it out loud, I love you, Father. 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 And over time, she fell so in love with God that she couldn't stand it anymore. Because of the power of Christ through her and the power of confession, of speaking it forth to the Father. Now, me, I didn't approach it that way personally. What I did was I got on my knees and I just told the Father, I said, Father, I don't love you enough. I know I don't. I know I don't. And I need to. And it, and I spent two years on, and every morning on my knees telling the Father, I need you to help me fall in love with you. And then it, 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 over time, it just started to happen. But, it, but it's critical because when you get to that place, everything changes. All your priorities change. Everything changes. And, and suddenly all that ugly stuff out there that's happening isn't that big of a deal anymore. You know, all you all you're like, you're kind of like, yeah, I, I got to go through it. and I don't really want to. But you, you love your father. You love Jesus. He's your friend. You, you know, he's going to protect you up to that point. And when and look at what happened with Stephen, they were throwing rocks and rocks were bashing him in the head. And he's praising God and going, look, I can see the father in heaven. You know, I have testimonies of people from Voice of the Martyrs that were being beaten by police in Nepal for preaching the gospel to the natives in Nepal. And they were literally physically being bashed in the head with the fist of the police, and they didn't feel any pain at all. Any pain. I believe that. It's amazing. And that. Yeah, so it's it. We, I think we really need to, if we get our priorities in order, I think the days ahead are going to be a lot less spooky, scary, and fearful for all of us, you know, for that reason. Um, praise God. Um, but anyway, Dr. Joy, did you want to close with a prayer tonight? We're down to the last couple of minutes. 
Uh, yes, and my prayer that I always uh, want to to leave people with is for everybody to pray with me together. So if you just close your eyes, and we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the glory of God and Almighty Jesus. We just praise you this day forever and ever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, folks, what can I say? Zen, joy, I don't know what to say. I don't know what condition this country is going to be in or if any of us are going to have an electronic format to talk by the time we get the next month. But the way it's going right now, I'm not really – I mean, I'd, I'd say we're pretty much in a pretty unsure state as far as uh, everything, you know, electronic connectivity-wise and censorship-wise is concerned right now. It's just things are out of control and accelerating at a speed that I think is blowing the mind of all the Second Amendment people out there. They just cannot believe what's happening. And But you know what? Here's the cool part. It's very exciting. This is the best part of all because we're in this state of acceleration, because the darkness is rising beyond our comprehension. We are so much closer to going home than ever before. That's true. Ain't that right, Zen? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We are almost there, man. <laughs> Looking forward I, I to it. I'm not back tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not missing this train. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank Amen. you, guys, so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Zen. Thank you, Dr. Joy. Powerful, powerful program. Thought-provoking always and motivational at the same time sobering. Praise his holy name. We have finally arrived at, at that turning point we've all been expecting. Uh, and um, let's look forward to the glory because it's right around the corner. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we will see you Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, Lord willing. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Zen. God bless you. Love you. God bless you. Love y'all. Love you both. You with repentant heart. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you and your seeking.